Today is a first for me in that I don't actually know how to pronounce the name of the game I'm going to review. Fee? Fay. I think I'm going to go with Fay. Right, with that sorted, is it any good? Let's find out. Before we get started, I just want to thank Zoink Games for providing us with this review copy. The story of Fay involves aliens or sentient beings known as the Silent Ones crashing into the forest and capturing its inhabitants. You play as a small fox-like creature who sets out on a quest to save his homeland. There is no dialogue and after a cutscene right at the start of the game, most of the game's story plays out through what you see as you progress. Every so often you will unlock a small glass orb from a chest which allows you to see through the eyes of the Silent Ones and fills in a few details as to what is happening, but a lot of the story is left quite ambiguous. The gameplay of Faye is reminiscent of games such as Journey, Rhyme, or to a lesser extent, Toki Tori 2, in that you are placed into the game world and left to find your own path. As with these games, there will sometimes be visual clues that you are going the right way, such as an animal to follow, or flowers growing as you walk past, but you are very much following your own instincts too, and you will start to get a feel for when you are on the right path. With all of these games, that feeling comes from clever and implicit cues left by the developers, but nonetheless, the feeling that you are making progress and finding your own path is a very satisfying one. Having said that, there will still be times when you feel that you are wandering a little aimlessly. Thankfully, the in-game map is helpful, and there is also a clever mechanic where singing as loud as you can, which is done by pulling back on the Joy-Con, will make a bird appear who will show you which way you should be going. In fact, Faye's main gameplay hook works on the idea of song. You will meet various other animals along the way, and by holding down the ZR button, you will call out or sing to them. If they reciprocate, then the two animals will be joined by an energy force. Tilting your Joy-Con, or the whole switch if you are playing portably, will see you tune in with this energy wave, like a radio signal. There is also an option to change the use of motion controls in these sections to using the right stick if this is more to your liking. Should you hit the right frequency, that animal will then be happy to sing when you do, and their songs can all be used to affect the environment around you for as long as the animal is near you. This could mean a flower opens up and could then be used as a platform to reach a higher area than before, for example. In order to learn that species song permanently, you will need to find their leader and break the Silent One's stranglehold over them. This is done by locating a certain number of pillars and releasing them from the Silent One's control. The pillars are always just out of reach and you will need to use your environment, as well as your woodland friends, to succeed, all the while avoiding the Silent Ones. You are pretty defenceless against the Silent Ones and you will need to hide in tall grass or keep a safe distance when near them as if you are spotted you will be captured and forced to start from your last checkpoint. Free the species leader and you learn their language, therefore granting you more abilities and making more of the world accessible to you. These abilities include being able to climb trees and being able to glide and give the game a bit of a Metroid vibe in the sense of uncovering new abilities that allow you to access places you couldn't previously. Faye has cherry picked some of the most fun parts of some very good games and does a good job of making them all work together. In total, gameplay gets a 16 out of 20. The game itself plays like a 3D platformer, and this brings me on to the controls. This is one area that the game can fall down a bit. That's not to say that the controls are bad, because they aren't, but they are a little inconsistent. The main issue is with the platforming segments themselves. An early example comes after your character learns the aforementioned climb ability. You climb trees by pressing B a number of times until you reach the top. Some of the time it is a little difficult to tell if you are at the very top of the tree and you will press B one time too many and fall down to the bottom again. Or when you go to jump from the top of the tree to a ledge you will sometimes miss a jump that looked pretty nailed on. There is no real penalty such as fall damage or anything like that, it's just a bit of a nuisance. It mainly occurs early in the game as later abilities will supersede the earlier ones to an extent, but it can make the early stages of the game feel a little more cumbersome than they should. Another gripe I had was with how you selected the language you wanted to use. 
You press L which brings up a selection wheel and you use the left stick to choose. It's okay, but when you need to switch a few times in quick succession, as you will have to later in the game, it had me yearning for a system of cycling through with a button press as this would have been much quicker. These gripes are by no means game breaking, it's just a shame that a game that has tried so hard to blend so many different game mechanics together does not quite manage to get the fundamental mechanics for its particular genre as tight as they should be. Having said that, another essential for 3D platforming is the camera, and this is fine. The game is responsive enough, the platforming just doesn't quite feel right, and controls get 12 out of 20. The graphics in Fae are absolutely delightful. The surroundings are purposefully chunky and blocky, which gives the game quite a tactile feeling. Everything looks and feels solid. This on its own would not look overly impressive, but then you have the gorgeous colour palette of purples, light and dark blues, pinks and oranges, which seem to soften the edges and bring the whole thing to life. It's a very effective juxtaposition and makes for a quite unique game world. It's also nice that the colours of the world change as you progress. Seeing the purples and blues change to a warmer green, pink, brown and orange ensemble really keeps the world you are in feeling fresh and alive. When you then add the good use of light and shadow, bushes and trees blowing in the breeze and the animals with their separate character traits, you have a game which is a joy to behold. In an era where you can guarantee that at least one game released on the eShop every week will go for that retro 8-bit aesthetic, Fay is a breath of fresh air. Graphics get 17 out of 20. The music in Fay has an orchestral feel to it. You can almost hear the stringed instruments and it fits the forest setting very well. It manages to feel quite melancholy but at the same time quite calming. It's the type of musical score that never really intrudes but you would miss it if it were not there. One highlight came when having to climb a huge beast. As you got closer to the top the music almost became more triumphant as if it were congratulating you on your achievement. Sound effects are suitable and blend in nicely and all of the animals cries and calls are appropriate. One thing I found quite humorous was how much your character's native song sounded like Gizmo from Gremlins. Only with a bit of a sore throat. Music complemented the graphical style well and built a nice atmosphere and it gets 16 out of 20. Faye costs £17.99 or $19.99. It took me around 7 hours to finish my playthrough and I would imagine that most people's first playthrough would be anywhere between 5 to 8 hours. I felt that I left the game in environment whilst it was still one that I enjoyed being in. The game could have overstayed its welcome had it been a bit longer and that would have been a shame as this is a world that you should leave with fond memories, not begrudging it because the last 2 hours or so feel like an unnecessary slog. The length for me felt just about right. There are collectibles to find such as wall paintings and pink gems that power up your animal abilities. The game keeps track of how many of these you have found in each section of the map, so you could always go back and look for the ones you have missed if you are a bit of a completionist. A 100% playthrough without a guide would probably take most people between 8 to 10 hours. Value gets 14 out of 20. To conclude, Fae is a game that feels like a lot of love has gone into it. I love the aesthetic and applaud the developers for taking so many different gameplay mechanics and tying them together into such a cohesive package. The game will tax your brain and your reflexes, but this is where the main flaws show. Although personally I felt the balance between allowing the player to explore and guiding them was just about right, it may be a little too obtuse for some people at times. Plus there is no denying that the fundamental controls are a little off which in a 3D platformer leads to a few too many falls from high up and having to retrace your steps. I would still absolutely recommend you give this one a try, just be aware of some minor shortcomings. Faye gets a switch up score of 75%. So will you be picking this one up or if you have done so already, what do you think of it? Let us know in the comments down below and as always, keep it switch up, 
for all things Switch, all the time. Happy gaming.